Welcome to the Praise God TV listeners and viewers. Uh, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, this is the beginning, the start of a lengthy teaching series that we will be doing on the kingdom of God. This will be a three-part series that we are starting today with uh, the study called this gospel of the kingdom. This is actually, uh, as I say, it's a part of the of a total of three uh, sessions or three sections of this teaching. And there'll be uh, about 20 hours of teaching on the kingdom of God. This is um, uh, te Jesus' teachings on the kingdom that uh, will begin with the kingdom sermons. And then we will move to the parables of the kingdom, which will be those, uh, key, those uh, parables that specifically speak of the kingdom. After we finish this uh, major part or major section, then we will begin the second series of teaching, and that will be called the Kingdom Discipleship. Uh, and, and the Kingdom Discipleship will be about 10 hours of teaching uh, on what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus. Once we define what it means to be, uh, what the Kingdom of God is, and what how Jesus presented the Kingdom of God, then we will speak about what it means to be a disciple of the kingdom and how Jesus gave specific terms of discipleship for whosoever, anyone, all who would follow him would uh, meet these terms of discipleship. So we will go through that in the second part. Then the third part of the teaching series will, will be disciple to disciple. This is uh, be making disciples like Jesus. And in this third part of the series, uh, it's once you become a disciple, then disciple making becomes part of that, that process. But it takes a disciple to make a disciple. So we will look at these three major teachings and all will flow together. And in the end, we'll have a complete understanding of everything that Jesus taught about the kingdom and discipleship and being a disciple in his kingdom. So we will begin uh, our teaching series now uh, and look at 1 Corinthians 10, excuse me, 1 Corinthians 3, 10 through 13. And in this it says, according to the grace of God, which was given to me like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it, for no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it is to be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality of each man's work. In this scripture, Paul is addressing the church in Corinth. The uh, Corinthian church had taken a wrong turn at this point. Paul founded the church in Corinth on a second missionary journey. And after Paul left, a second uh, uh, missionary came by the name of Apollos. And Apollos continued on and, and built on the work that Paul started. Uh, after that short period of time, the the believers in Corinth began to take their eyes off of Jesus and began to focus on these men, the, at leaders. And some said, oh, well, I'm a follower of Paul. Others said, I'm a follow, follower of Apollos. And there began to be dissension within the church and division within the church. And uh, it's very clear uh, in Paul and his teachings that believers call to unity and fellowship with one another. And so, Paul begins to address this situation in the church. The church in Corinth was very much like a microcosm of the 21st century church because many people, people today, many believers today, build their faith upon poor foundations using inferior materials to, 
denominationalism, creeds, doctrines of men, and by following Christian celebrities or the latest trends. As a result, we see the same kind of quarreling and divisions taking place in the church today. And we also see false teachers entering into the church, taking advantage of this confusion. So the question is, is how do we address the situation? How did Paul address it with the, with the Corinthian church? And how do we direct, address it with the uh, church today? And the remedy is the same. It is to return to a genuine biblical faith built solely upon the person of Jesus Christ and his teachings. So in his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul exhorted believers to test yourselves to see if you are in the faith, examine your faith yourselves to see if indeed Christ is in you. And so then how do we know? The next question, that next natural question is, well, how do we know if what we believe and what we are hearing is an authentic Christianity? And what does it mean to be a true Christian? You know, today, if you put 10 Christians at random into one room and you ask them, what does it mean to be a Christian? You're liable to get 10 different answers from them. And certainly, uh, certainly there is a, a problem with that. And then how then do we, do we actually define what is truly uh, a genuine, authentic Christian faith? In fact, in, in many circles today, even to ask such a question is insulting because they, they, it assumes that somebody knows what authentic Christianity is. So how do we know that? Well, there's only one way that we can know that, and we have to go back to the source, back to the original. It's the same thing, uh, similar situation that, uh, uh, how do you know what's a genuine $20 bill and what is a counterfeit $20, $20 bill? Uh, how do you, are there tests that we can uh, make to to uh, determine what is genuine and what is counterfeit. And the fact of the matter there is. And how do the experts do it? How does an expert tell the difference between what is counterfeit and what is genuine? They don't go and, and begin to study all the counterfeits and try to figure out all the different ways that counterfeits are made. What they do instead is they study the, gen the genuine, the original. They study the $20 bill, the genuine $20 bill. They know its size. They know its shape. They know exactly every feature that is on that $20 bill. They know its thickness. They know the way it feels, the weight of the paper, everything about that, that they study. So they carefully look at it. So when they pick up a counterfeit, they can immediately identify there's something wrong with this. There's something about the, this is not genuine. Well, in the same way, in the same way, we can apply certain uh, tests to our to what we believe in order to determine what is a genuine and uh, true Christian belief or faith. Uh, John said in First John four one, he said that we must test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And in fact, believers are commanded to diligently study God's word so as not to be led away from the truth. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul was very clear. He said, be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. So Christians should be motivated to earnestly study the Bible because God is a rewarder of those who seek him. And we demonstrate our love for him uh, uh, by seeking the spirit of truth and having the spirit of truth within us. As a matter of fact, it can be said uh, without, with confidence that we need the Holy Spirit. Without the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit within us, we cannot know the truth. This is why you often find people who can study the Bible, if they're not born again, if they're not saved, if they don't have the Holy Spirit within them, they will study the Bible and come away unaffected, unchanged by what has happened. And study Bible study requires for us to have the right heart condition because our heart the condition determines our ability to understand the scriptures and understand the word of God. 
But are there, is there a way to know for sure how that if what we're studying is right, is true? And there, there is a way, and it's called hermeneutics and exegesis. Hermeneutics is one of those big, fat Greek words that often scare away your average Christian, thinking that, oh no, only a Bible scholar or only someone who's going to seminary school can really study and understand the Bible in a, in a very uh, effective way. But really all hermeneutics is, is simply the science of studying texts. There is a scientific approach to studying the biblical text. So biblical hermeneutics is a scientific method of, of approaching the scriptures. And it's very uh, simple in what we're doing. The method of hermeneutics or the scientific method of, of studying scriptures is to look at the scriptures as much as you can in their original language, to understand the scriptures in their geographic setting, their proper geographical setting, and understand the scriptures in the time in which they were written and using scripture to verify scripture instead of using outside sources or personal experiences or the opinions of men to interpret what the scriptures are saying. So therefore, uh, if we are to know with certainty whether or not we what we are being taught is, is genuine Christianity, we must return to the source, to the original gospel revealed in the person and teachings of Jesus Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith. And so that is what this study is about. That's what this study does. This study is all about Jesus and his teachings. And when we understand his teachings and we look at these teachings, we realize the fact that the kingdom of God is central to everything that Jesus taught. Everywhere Jesus went, everything he did, every person he encountered along the way, was somehow or some way related to his teaching and preaching and advancing, demonstrating the reality of the kingdom of God. And so in the end, it is our desire that at the end of this study, that we will understand, know and understand what it is authentic, real, genuine Christian Christianity. And authentic Christianity is something that is worthy of acceptance or belief as conforming to or based on fact. And that's what hermeneutics is about. It's, it's coming out with this authentic understanding. It is conforming. That means our faith, our belief, what we are teaching, what we are preaching conforms to the original. And it is the original and the foundation of our teaching is indeed the teaching that Jesus did on the kingdom. The kingdom is the foundation of Jesus' teachings. He is our foundation and what he taught in word and deed is the foundation of what we teach. And though in the end, we will, we will come away knowing that our uh, uh, Christianity is not false. It's not an imitation of something, uh, but it is in fact real. Uh, and genuine. It is uh, the, uh, the true representation of what Jesus taught and presented to us. And so as we uh, begin the study on the kingdom, we will uh, turn our hearts and minds to the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, and we will use these sound scientific methods of interpreting God's Word to search out what the Bible defines as authentic Christianity. So let us pray and ask God to purify our hearts, that we will see and know uh, what he has said, that we will understand fully his teachings, and that we will, in the end, obey them. So as we begin these, as we begin these studies on the kingdom, uh, you will need uh, two or three tools on this study. Now, if, you, if you'd like, you can pick up the study guide uh, on the gospel of the kingdom. And in this study guide, uh, it has all the fill in the blanks. You can fill in the blanks and go along with us and follow along uh, with that as, as, as the teaching progresses. And you can 
look up the scriptures with us and fill in the scriptures and what those scriptures say. But you don't have to have the, that, but the study guide is available on Amazon.com uh, or you can go directly to our website and go to the Create Space website and there you'll find the book. And also, but you don't have to have the book. Uh, all you need with you is you need to, to, first of all, you need your Bible because this is all scripture based. Everything is based on the Bible here. And we'll be looking up a lot of scriptures and a lot of scriptures we'll, we'll be using in that hermeneutic, which is the, which is letting the scriptures and leading, letting the scriptures lead us to the truth. And then you'll need, of course, a, a, a paper to write on, a notebook or something to keep your notes as we're going through this teaching material. And then, the, of course, you'll obviously need something to write with. So, uh, as we begin these studies, uh, gather your uh, materials together, your Bible, your pen and pencil, or in your notebook, and we will begin our studies on the Gospels of the Gospel of the Kingdom with the Kingdom Sermons. These Kingdom Sermons that we will be, what we will start with in our first lesson, these uh, Kingdom Sermons are uh, everything that Jesus taught in public on the gospel of the kingdom. And uh, so we will begin to look at those and see that Jesus had two levels of teaching he did on the kingdom. He did the public sermons, so those are the sermons, and mostly what we'll go over with, the, with those sermons will be the Sermon on the Mount. And then there was what he taught his disciples in private. Uh, he told his disciples that it was for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom. So we'll, so we'll begin to teach those things that Jesus taught on two different levels. The public sermons, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, and also then we will go into the parables of the kingdom and what Jesus taught about the kingdom of God. And, and as, we, as we look at these things, uh, we will see that Jesus was indeed looking at the kingdom in a whole new and dynamic way. Uh, for Jesus, uh, Jesus was teaching that the kingdom of God is at hand, that the, there's the present reality of the kingdom that is, that is near. And uh, he also spoke, spoke about the kingdom in terms of the kingdom being distant and far off in its fulfillment. So what Jesus taught about the kingdom and its present reality was something that was new and something that many of the people in his audience didn't fully understand. They were looking to the kingdom to come at some point in some distant future. But clearly, when we look at the Gospels, it becomes very clear that from the very beginning, the very first thing that Jesus taught to the very end, the last thing that Jesus taught before he ascended up into heaven, was about the kingdom. And his disciples were, all, were often asking him burning questions about the kingdom and when would it come and how would it operate and how would it function. And so those are the things that we will be looking at in the weeks to come, in these lessons to come. And we will see very clearly uh, what these teachings of, on the kingdom are about. So we will also look at uh, the kingdom was an uh, integral part of everything that Jesus was doing. When Jesus began to preach and say, repent, uh, it was all in relationship to the kingdom. And when Jesus uh, often would go and he would heal someone and when he would present uh, someone who was healed and, they, and he'd say, rejoice for the kingdom of God has come near you. So as Jesus taught, he also taught some very important things about the kingdom. He taught that the kingdom was good news. He taught that the uh, secret of the kingdom was given to his disciples only. Uh, and Jesus was uh, sent, told the, his followers that he was actually sent to preach the, go the, the gospel of the kingdom. So all these things we will, we will be looking at and we will be studying and examining these things as we go along. And uh, we will look at the kingdom of God and the kingdom uh, that Jesus preached and, and how he presented it and, uh, and how people uh, understood it in relationship to that. So 
We look at the, at the kingdom of, of uh, God in the Old Testament, how the Old Testament scriptures relate to the kingdom of God as Jesus presented it. We will look at the kingdom, his uh, teachings in the kingdom, a relationship to the law of God and how all that worked together. If we were to sum up all of Jesus' teachings, if we were to sum up everything that Jesus taught concerning the kingdom, it would we would conclude that it could be stated in one sentence, that in the presence of the king is where the kingdom is found. And so we will uh, go through all of these uh, understandings of the kingdom that Jesus, that Jesus presented from the Old Testament scriptures. The Jewish, Jewish people had certain expectations concerning the kingdom, and Jesus had to address those expectations. At the same time, there were certain things and mysteries of the kingdom that were hidden from uh, the, the, from, from the Jewish people that the prophets had presented. And there were certain things that Jesus revealed that up to that time had been hidden. So we will examine those things as well in our study. We will examine uh, the, uh, the way that Jesus spoke about the kingdom of heaven and the relationship uh, of Jesus to the kingdom, to his kingdom. We will uh, look at uh, the prophetic kingdom and what does it mean to be a citizen of God's kingdom. And Jesus defined all of these things in his teachings. And so we will also see through his kingdom sermons how Jesus addressed the Ten Commandments, uh, that Jesus actually addressed each of these Ten Commandments and gave the right interpretation of these commandments. We will look at his Sermon on the Mount and we will look also at what Jesus taught us about prayer. We will look at uh, those things that he taught us concerning uh, the blessings of the kingdom and what does it mean in relationship to the kingdom and the bless blessings of the kingdom. And so Jesus' uh, uh, teachings uh, and the kingdom really encompass his entire teaching ministry. And uh, everything that Jesus taught concerning the kingdom is what the apostles then presented, for they were presenting what Jesus taught. And so uh, with the help and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to go through these teachings and we will uh, uh, have a new and hopefully a new and fresh revelation, a deeper understanding and fresher revelation of what this is about. So we have many things that we will examine just in the sermons and in these weeks to come. So we, so we will hope that you will uh, stay with us through these weeks and that you will be blessed by and edified by these studies. So uh, let, us, let us pray uh, concerning all of this. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word and for your truth. We thank you that you sent us your son, Jesus, not only to die upon the cross for us, but also to point the way into the kingdom for us and to show us a way. He, may, he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. And so Father, in these uh, weeks ahead, in these hours of teaching that we will be uh, pre presenting, we ask you, Lord, to open up the scriptures to us, open our hearts, open our minds, Lord Jesus, that we might know you and know your word in a deeper and more meaningful way that we can, in the end, be assured that what we believe and what we have been taught and what we believe about the kingdom of God and is authentic, genuine Christianity. So we thank you, Father, for all of this. We bless your holy name. Amen.